Hi, I'm Tom with some more ATPL tips. This is the first video in a series that I'm calling GNAV Basics. This series will look at some of the fundamental principles from GNAV, starting in this video with a refresher on latitude and longitude. Video two will cover the departure formula and show you why the formula is what it is. Video three will cover rum lines and great circles. And finally, video four will be about convergency and conversion angle. I always try to not assume too much prior knowledge before doing these videos, but I completely realize that you may not need a refresher on latitude and longitude, which is why I'm making this a standalone video at the beginning of the series. If you, if you would benefit from um, a refresher on the way latitude and longitude works. Um, if you want to learn how to use the DMS button on your calculator, which will save your life, then stay here. Otherwise, maybe click on over to video two and start having a look at departure. If you're staying with me, great, let's go. So, latitude and longitude. Let's have a look at a really familiar looking map of the world. Every position on Earth can be identified using an address, and that's what coordinates of latitude and longitude are. You can see this map here is divided up into what looks like a grid, and they are lines of latitude and longitude. Lines of latitude are horizontal and they tell us how far north or south we are by measuring the angle between our position and the equator. So they're labelled in degrees north or south of the equator up to a maximum of 90 degrees. In a similar way, lines of longitude divide the Earth up into segments from the South Pole to the North Pole and they tell us how far to the east or to the west we are of the Greenwich Meridian. Let's go back to some really simple geometry in order to explain a few things. Here is a circle, and a circle is made up of 360 degrees. A degree is just a division of a circle. Here are 360 degrees coming from the centre of the circle, showing how it can be divided up. And we can do the same thing with the Earth. Now, I haven't drawn 360 lines onto the Earth shown here, but you can see that by taking a top-down view of the Earth, in a really simple way, we can divide it up, just as we would a circle, into 360 equal parts. In the basic geography of the Earth, we use the Greenwich Meridian as our reference point, labelled here at the bottom of the screen. Anything to the right as labelled here is the Eastern Hemisphere, and anything to the left is the Western Hemisphere. But you can't keep going to the East forever, eventually you end up back where you started. And since circles are divided up from the centre to their outer perimeter, we do the same thing with the Earth's meridians. Notice that the zero degree meridian stops at the pole. The other side of it is labelled 180 degrees. It is the anti-meridian, that is, it is the meridian opposite from the zero degree Greenwich meridian. You can't get further east or west from a position than its anti-meridian, that is, the position on the opposite side of the globe from it. So a key fact to grab really early on here is that a meridian on its own does, doesn't circle the globe in its entirety. A meridian needs an anti-meridian in order to form a complete circle around the Earth. And we'll come back to that later on when we look at great circles in video three, I think it will be. Okay, so that's kind of a look at uh, lines of longitude and the way that they measure east to west of the Greenwich Meridian, but let's take a look at lines of latitude. While lines of longitude measure the size of the angle between the Greenwich Meridian and another given meridian, lines of latitude measure the angular difference between the centre of the Earth, the equator, and the position on the surface. Now, actually that isn't strictly accurate. It would be true if the world was a perfect sphere, but it's not. It's slightly squashed at the poles. However, for the sake of exams, um, 
you can assume that the Earth is a perfect sphere. At least when doing the maths, you'll need to answer questions about the oblate spheroid and the difference between geodetic, geographic and geocentric models, um, but that's not for this video. Okay, all lines of longitude are the same length. They all start at one pole, they all end at the other pole, and the circle that they make with their anti-meridian always cuts the Earth in half. And any circle that touches the surface of the Earth, whose centre is the centre of the Earth, is called a great circle. But unlike lines of longitude, lines of latitude are not all the same length. The only line of latitude that perfectly cuts the Earth in half is the equator. All other lines of latitude are actually smaller, as you can see by the decreasing size of these concentric circles, getting smaller towards the North Pole. And that raises a couple of interesting things to know about that very first map that we were looking at. When you take a look at this familiar looking map of the Earth, you can see that in a couple of ways actually is really misleading. Firstly, let's look at lines of latitude. Notice they all look the same length. Well, we know from thinking about the three-dimensional globe that they're definitely not the same length. And the lines of longitude projected onto this map are also wrong because we know that all lines of longitude start at the South Pole, end at the North Pole. However, looking at this map, lines of longitude are parallel, it would appear, and never seem to meet. That's also wrong. And that leads us on to chart projections. Now, I'm not going into detail about chart projections in this video, you just need to know that they exist. There are different methods by which to show the three-dimensional globe onto a two-dimensional map and display it. However, they all have strengths and weaknesses in particular ways. Um, there's a couple of chart projection types that you really have to be able to wrap your head around to be able to answer uh, questions about their properties, do a little bit of maths with them, and certain things like straight lines on a Mercator might not look straight on a Lambert. Um, I'm not going to go into much detail about that in this video, that is for a later series, but just be aware at this point, looking at the beginnings of latitude and longitude, just be aware that there are different types of chart projection. Dividing a circle up into 360 degrees is great, but as you can see here, it doesn't really give us enough accuracy. Here's a wedge of the Northern Hemisphere over the Eastern USA, and if I add all of the degree lines in between 75 degrees west and 90 degrees west, you can see that although the gap is only one degree between each of these lines, actually the gap can be quite large. It's kind of important that we're accurate as pilots, especially when we've got fee-paying passengers who are expecting to turn up in a very particular place, that's what they've paid for. And so each degree can be broken up into further pieces. Firstly, a degree can be divided up into minutes, and you can probably work it out, there are 60 minutes per degree. And a minute can further be divided up into seconds, and that's right, there are 60 seconds in every minute. And so here are some coordinates for a position on the Earth in a standard format. The first half gives latitude information, that is a position relative to the equator. Here we can see that we are 33 degrees 56 minutes and 30 seconds north. The second half gives us a position relative to the Greenwich Meridian. And in this example, we are 81 degrees, 7 minutes and 12 seconds to the west of the Greenwich Meridian. Also, notice that the degrees of latitude use two digits, while the degrees of longitude use three. And the reason for that is, with latitude, the furthest you can go is 90 degrees north. You're never going to get to a three-digit number, whereas degrees of longitude, the highest number that you can get to is 180, which is, of course, a three-digit number. Okay, this is one of the standard formats for giving coordinates of latitude and longitude. However, it's not the only format that you're likely to see uh, in your work as a pilot and in your exam questions. And this position is not the same as this position, which says 33 degrees 56.3 minutes north and 81 degrees 
7.12 minutes west. This second example has cut out the seconds and turned them into a decimal within the minutes for each position. Just like minutes and seconds that you're used to in the world of telling the time, we're dealing in maths using what's called base 60, not base 10. And so for the first example, for our latitude, it's not 56.3 minutes north, because 30 seconds is half of one minute. So it would actually be 56.5 minutes north. And our position of longitude would not be 7.12 minutes west. The number of seconds that we've got here, 12, is in fact uh, 2 tenths of 60. So our actual position of longitude, if we decimalise the seconds, would be 7.2 minutes. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can check this out on a calculator. Firstly, for this example, uh, we can take the seconds and divide it by 60. So if we do that for our position of latitude, we had 30 seconds. So 30 divided by 60, and that will give us 0.5. And you know that 30 is half of a minute anyway, so that should be fairly easy. You can do that for our position of longitude as well. Take 12 divided by 60. gives us 0 0.2. So one way to convert seconds into minutes, and you can do the same actually for minutes into degrees, is to divide whatever the number is by 60. The other thing that you might not know about yet is the DMS button on your calculator. This is really, really, really helpful and uh, needs to be your friend. It's great for doing latitude and longitude calculations. It's also really good for doing ca uh, calculations with time, which will come up in GNAV later on as well. So for this example, uh, firstly, the, the DMS button on your calculator, it might actually have DMS written on it, or it might, like mine, uh, just be labeled with the symbols of degrees, minutes, and seconds. And there's a really simple way that you can use it to work out how to transfer um, this number of seconds into a decimal of minutes. Um, and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take, uh, what was the latitude? It was 56, 56 minutes, press the button, 30 seconds, press the button. Now, press equals. It'll just tell you what you've already typed into the calculator. And at first glance you go, okay, well this hasn't done anything for me, but press that DMS, the degree, minute, second button. Press that button one more time Notice right there on the screen, it converts 56 minutes 30 seconds into 56.5. That's really helpful. We can do it again for our um, minutes and seconds of longitude. So we'll go 7, press the button, 12, press the button, equals, press the button again, and it converts it to 7.2. Awesome. There's another thing you can do, actually. And um, by the way, you might have noticed the way that I was typing that into the calculator is slightly misleading because I was suggesting to the calculator that we were talking about 56 degrees and 30 minutes as opposed to 56 minutes, 30 seconds. It actually doesn't really matter if you just type in the little bit that you're trying to um, do a bit of maths with, the calculator will give you the right answer. Watch what happens if I'd typed in 33 degrees, 56 minutes and 30 seconds. 33 degrees, 56 minutes, 30 seconds, press equals, and again, it will just show us what we've already typed in, but press the DMS button again, and it decimalizes the entire thing. So now we've got 33.9416666667 degrees. That's cool. Um, so this is a third way that you can, you can, um, you can write the coordinate positions. So you've got um, a decimalized number of degrees, you've got degrees with a decimalized number of minutes, and you've got degrees, minutes, and seconds. Now, any of these examples could come up in the real world and also in your exams. The DMS button's kind of cool for going the other direction as well. We've converted from base 60 into base 10, but you can use it to go from base 10 into base 60. Watch this, if I just type into the calculator the number that it's just given me, um, 33.9416666667, press equals, so far it's just telling me what I've told it, press the DMS button, watch what happens. 
it converts a decimalized number of degrees into degrees, minutes and seconds. It's really, really helpful and this DMS button needs to be something that you get comfortable with for real world flying but also for the sake of the exams because it will make things so much quicker. The only thing that you've got to remember to do is always press the DMS button. It's really easy once you've typed in the last number to forget to type the DMS button and then you get a syntax error like this. If I just did 33 degrees 56 minutes 30 seconds press equals it comes up with a syntax error and that's just because I'd left off the seconds symbol. And really that's it. There's a few key points that you should probably be aware of. Remember that latitude is measuring the angle between the equator and your position either north or the south. Longitude deals with your position to the east or to the west of the Greenwich Meridian. Remember that one degree is made up of 60 minutes and that one minute is made up of 60 seconds. Pay real close attention to the format of the coordinates that you're given in your exam questions and get to know the DMS, the degree, minute, second button on your calculator because it will become your friend, especially in GNAV. And that's it for this quick refresher on latitude and longitude. Go over to watch the next video on departure. And as ever, I'd really appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I'll see you next time with some more ATPL tips.